Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Lucas. Lucas is from Atlanta in the USA. So let's see what Lucas has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello William, how are you sir? Hello Lucas, I'm very well, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good. It's good to meet you finally. Yes, we've been trying. You finally met, met now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and excuse me, because I'm, be, I'm drinking more of my shake here, so I'm, I'm drinking straight out of the blender like an animal, like a crazy person. Amazing. Tell me what's, what's on it. Mm. Um, it's strawberries, blueberries, bananas, uh, protein shake, almond milk, oatmeal, eggs. And I'm feeling very hungry now after that. I know, it's so good, it's so good. I love it. I try to drink it every day to help me gain weight. I see. So every mo it is your routine every morning? Mm -hmm. Usually in the mornings, but because I didn't go to the gym today because it's my day off, I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just make it later on. So I was like, okay, I'll make it now and eat it. But usually before around, before 12 o'clock, I'll try to have it. But today is a little bit later, but that's okay. Great, great. Okay, Lucas, so just before we start the game, just tell me where are you from? Um, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. Right. And um, what do you do for a living? Um, I work in hospitality. So I own a company, a staffing agency. So we provide waiters and bartenders for the parties. Right. And what do you like the most about your job, in your opinion? Oh my God. Um, the most that I love about my job is that the parties are always different. I meet people from all walks of life and I've had the opportunity of meeting people that I've like seen on TV and, and now I'm like I'm in a room with like you know all these celebrities and just people that I look up to and I admire so I'm just like uh, taking it aback so that that I love it it's always changing and it's always keeping you on your feet very good and it's the mo what's the most challenging part in your opinion um, the challenging part is I am a glorified babysitter, is how I say it, is because at the end of the day, I'm babysitting adults. I have my staff, I have my clients, and then I have my clients' clients who are at the party. So there's three different sets of people that I have to take care of and make sure that they're all okay, they're all doing well, and that they're all happy. Um, because at the end of the day, without the staff, I wouldn't be where I am. So they're like, my, they're my number one, and then my clients are my number two. Um, but it's juggling humans, and you know, people are just crazy, and people make mistakes, so my job is to pretty much fix the mistake and put out the fire before it blows the house down. <laughs> That's the best part, isn't it? We you don't know, have this challenge to kind of try to fix things out before yeah. it goes okay. that different it's direction. Never goes perfect. You may think it looks perfect, but behind the scenes, we're all losing our minds. But as long <laughs> as they don't see the craziness, we're good. Very good. Okay, Lucas, so welcome to Ilya and the Magic Box. Here, my lovely box full of random fun questions. Okay, I'm just gonna play some music just for us to get in the mood before the first question. Ready? Let's do it. Right, ready for the first question? Yeah, let's do it. Lucas, um, what are you most passionate about? Um, the, what I'm most passionate about is I, I love to travel, traveling and learning new cultures is my passion because I never thought that I would ever have the opportunity to travel as much as I have in the past. And uh, where was the last place you visited that stuck to your head, some, somewhere very special? That was very special for me, Thailand. Tell me about it. Two, I went there two years ago um, and I went for two, two months. I just decided to say I'm cutting myself off, I'm taking a backpack and I'm gonna go. So I spent um, three weeks in the northern part of Thailand, one week in Vietnam, one week in Cambodia, and then three weeks in the south part of Thailand. Um, and it's just, it's such a beautiful country. Like the people are amazing. The culture is, uh, it's just, I, I don't know. They're, they're, they're such a friendly people. And it's considered, they say that it's a country of smiles and it's really true because they literally are always smiling at you. Um, and one thing that I absolutely loved is that towards the end of the trip, I could actually speak Thai, but like on the streets. So even I spoke like a child, they at least understood what I was saying and they could like go back and forth with me. So I, I loved it. That's amazing. And uh, so did you go on your own? Yeah, I'm by myself. And did you know anyone there or not? 
like, wow, that's I, amazing. I had a little bit of a plan, but I left a lot of space for just life to happen because a lot of people says, when you go to Thailand, you don't want to have like a, a to-do list and at this time and at that time because you're just going to naturally meet people and go on these adventures and then you just say, you know what, I, don't, I want to do this, I don't want to do that because you just discover all these amazing places. Absolutely. Absolutely, I agree. Let's go for the second question. Right, let's get another question for you, Lucas. Um, tough question. How do you think you die or how would you like to die if you could choose? I would love to die as an 85, 90 year old man in my bed, closing my eyes and saying, good night world, this is it. Very quickly. <laughs> that is the best way for me to go. <laughs> I think that's the wish of everyone. No pain, nothing. Just go to sleep. That's it. Just take me to La La Land and I'm, I, I'll never come back. I'll see you later. Let me add something to that question. If someone came up to you and say, okay, Lucas, I've got here an envelope with your death date inside. Would you open it or not? And why? I mean, on one hand, I could open it and then I would know but then at the same time, I would also know that nothing else could kill me. So maybe that would encourage me to take maybe a crazier risk that could be life-threatening kind of thing. Like, oh, I'm gonna jump out of more planes kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I do like the element of surprise because I know me and I feel like I would get so anxious if I knew and it was getting closer and closer and I would just lose my mind. And that's all my, I would just fester on that and I just wouldn't do that. So I would rather not know. For that reason because i would just let it when it happens it happens and my time is there when it's there absolutely i think i'll be paranoid thinking about all the time i think if i find out i'm originally from brazil ah, okay yeah but i've been living two things in brazil how to say pau, pau de queijo which i love i love pão de queijo. it's like it's mm, 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 mm. Pão de queijo, it's the best thing you can find in the world my god i just moved i've been living in this new flat now for the last um like eight seven months and i introduced pão de queijo to my flatmates they were like what's that what's oh, that i love it and the other one that the other thing that i know i cannot say because it's a word that a lot of the gay boys say in our in the culture and i'm like mm, i can't say that one they go Mm, loca. They say a word that starts with a B. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that, so I was like, oh, they always say, there was a, oh, mm, loca. And I'm like, yeah, mm, loca. <laughs> right, I can say the first word, the, uh, first word is bicha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, bicha, it's, um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's when you said that, look. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. have, have you been in Brazil before? No, I have not. I, that's the one place I need to go now. Just like it's on my, it's on my list. I promise. Are you, are you, uh, do you have any back, uh, Latin backgrounds because of your surname or not? Uh, yes, my father, he's from Guatemala. My mom's from Puerto Rico. There you go. When I saw your, your surname, I was like, oh, he might be a Latino as well. No, no, I'm a <laughs> but you were born in the USA. Yes, my sister and I, we are first generation in the USA. I see. But do you speak Spanish as well? Mm -hmm. Si, si, yo hablo español también. Great, very good. <laughs> right, let's go for another question, Lucas. Let's do it. Right, Lucas, before the next question, tell me what's the best part of living in Atlanta? The best part about living in Atlanta is that you are surrounded by nature. There's a lot of trails here, a lot of mountains. Um, it's very, it's very beautiful and it's very green city. So that's one thing I do like a lot about Atlanta. Um, is that I can step out and have trees everywhere. And what's the most challenging part? Oh, the potholes, the potholes. The roads are awful, awful here. I literally wanting to strangle the city because I don't know what crazy they're smoking, but like the potholes are like on another level of crazy. I feel like I'm driving in a video game every day just doing this. <laughs> and I do that because it's like when I first moved here, I got so many flat tires. I'm like, you know what? No, nah, I'm not getting any more tires. I'm just gonna do this. And if I tell another car, move out of the way before it hits you, move out of the way because I'm not, I can't afford to keep fixing tires here. That's the one thing I do not like. Oh, very interesting. Okay, next question for you is, um, what has been the happiest point of your life? The happiest point of my life? 
Ooh. Um, I would have to say one of the happiest points of my life was when I started my company. Um, I had just turned 25 with my business partner who was also turning, who also turned 25. And, it, you know, it was just something I never thought that I would actually have or do or be a part of the business world or, or just even have the cojones to do that. You know, so I, I surprised myself and it just made me so happy that I actually did something right for a change at that point in my life because prior to that, it was not so good for a long time. I see. And how long have, have been, uh, start, have, that have you started this journey? Um, the journey with my business, because I will be 39 in October, it'll be 14 years now since uh, I started and went on this crazy little journey. You know what? For a minute, I thought you were 25 because you said you started when I started when you were 25. I see. What I understood was that oh my God, actually, you look for me, you look 25. I, I would say you look 25 for me for sure. Well, the moisturizers. <laughs> a lot of shake as well. They shake your skin. Say again? In the good Latino skin. Yes. <laughs> so what are we right. doing with this? Let's go for another one. Okay, Lucas, next question for you is, if you could be in somebody's skin for 24 hours, who that would be and why? If I could be, if I could be anybody else, dead or alive in the world? Um, either um, way. Hmm, oh God. Um, I would want to be, oh God, who do I want to be? Hmm, uh, um, damn, I mean, maybe, Oh God, I feel like I'm gonna go with a superhero. I would want to be like a superhero. I'd want to be like one of the X-Men. Which one? Probably, I would go with Mystique. And why is that? Because she, because she's a shapeshifter. And she can like <laughs> go into any situation that she wants and, and just blend right on in and do her thing. And if she wants to be sneaky, she can be sneaky. If she wants to play by the rules, she can do that too. But if she can have access to anything. So I'm like, hmm. Very good. Another question for you. Right, before the next question, tell me a funny story that happened to you during your trip in Thailand, something that you can share. Oh my God, yeah. Um, so when I went to Thailand, I actually wasn't planning on going to Vietnam. And, um, I, I uh, met uh, this guy off Grindr and we actually just met up for coffee and he had another friend with him and the three of us were just sitting there. We chatted for like two hours and this is when I was in, uh, I had just finished volunteering because I volunteered with an elephant sanctuary in Northern Thailand in Chiang Mai. And so I had a couple days left over. So I was like, oh, let me travel. So, you know, and I met them. So I met up with them. We had coffee. We had a great conversation for like three hours. And they're like, yeah, we're just traveling around and we're going to Vietnam in like next week. If you want to come, you should just come meet up with us and do it. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do it. I loved it. And it, it was just so funny because it's like, I never had the, like the thoughts of like, you're just going to meet people and just, oh yeah, sure. I'll go to this other country and go on another adventure with you. But a lot of people told me that Those are the types of things that you're just gonna expect that you're gonna have these moments, you're gonna click and have these amazing times with people and they're just gonna be like, you wanna go do this? I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'll go swim with sharks with you. Sure, let's jump in the volcano. Okay, let's jump <laughs> in the plane, I'm cool. Um, so that that was definitely uh, one of those moments. Were they American as well? No, no. Um, he was from London, but he was actually a teacher um, in, um, in Cambodia. And so he just like travels around, his friends come in and they just like go through all parts of Southeast Asia. And so, you know, they said, just come to Vietnam. And then they told me, oh, you can just stay in Ho Chi Minh City, you know, because we're going to be staying near there. So I got a hostel there and uh, the plane ticket, like for the next week was maybe like $40 round trip. So I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to go. And then I found a hostel that was like $8 a night, but it was perfect. It was fine. You know, I could lock it up. It was safe. I could do my thing. And then I could just spend all day out, come back, pass out and do it all over again. Wow, amazing, wow. Next question for you is, share with us a crazy story that happened to you when you were at school, crazy or funny? When I was at school? Yeah. Oh God. Um, so this is kind of an embarrassing one. When I was little, I was like six years old. 
Um, so this is kind of traumatic, but I kind of I laugh about it now. Um, so when I was little, I had a problem just going to the bathroom a lot and doing number two. And so I remember using the restroom, there's these little kids that went on top of the stall and look over at me and they would just start like messing with me and saying these things. And so I would then get scared to even go to the bathroom. So I would actually poop in my pants, <laughs> which was bad for like a month or two after. And then I was then considered the stinky kid of the school. And I'm like, oh God, this is awful. I'm like, that's literally a smelly, shitty kid. Um, <laughs> and my mom had to like talk to me and yell at me and put me together again and be like, no, you don't, you know, you don't do that. You gotta do this, da 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 da. And then eventually it was fine, but it was just like, so embarrassing. Just like, oh. <laughs> It was a, a way of escaping of the boiling side, I mean. Yeah, it was a way of escaping bullying. I would rather just soil myself as, oh. a, you know, as a seven, eight-year-old just thinking like that. I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question for you. Um, what is your favorite kitchen smell? My favorite kitchen smell? Yeah. Like, Cake? Steak. Oh, steak and tortillas. Oh, wow. Do you like cooking? Um, a little bit, a little bit. I'm pretty basic. Like, I'll just like make my steak and my seasonings and my chickens. Um, but my boyfriend brought me a cookbook because I am doing a little bit more of it because I do enjoy it. I'm just not like the best, but I know like the basic things, you know? <laughs> Sometimes if I follow a recipe, I can make it really good and fancy. And is there something that you don't like to eat at all? Um, I actually, I cannot eat anything spicy, so I cannot eat like Indian food. Nope, forget about it. I just, I can't do it. Which made it hard when I was in Thailand because they naturally do put a lot of spice in their food. So I had to, you know, make sure that they did not add in those extra spices for me. So I was always more careful about what I was eating because I, mean, I may not even know what I was eating. So I just have to make sure, I don't care what I'm eating, just make sure no spicy. <laughs> I cannot eat either. Um, I, the other day, I met a friend of mine who had some Chinese, and um, we, we ordered online, and you made you put a note saying that um, one of the dishes were not spicy at all, mm -hmm. and uh, the other with spicy. They understood spicy in every uh, each dish. We received the delivery with, with spice everywhere, and I was mm -hmm. like, I tried, I tried to remove some of the top, but it was already all part of it and I was eating I was literally like a bottle of water on my side because I couldn't enjoy the food okay it's crazy bueno bueno another question for you right next question for you is okay Lucas um, which movie had a big influence on you which movie had a big influence on me oh lord okay um Actually, yes, there is one movie. It's called Trick. It's an old movie that came out in 1999 about these two gay guys. It's a comedy in New York City in the village who are trying to hook up. And the entire day movie is them trying to hook up, but then things happening with their other friends that get involved and somehow things just get messed up and they can't like have a good time. And, and um, I remember when I first saw that movie, I was living in South Carolina and I was about 16, 17 years old and I saw it and I was like, oh my God, that's where I want to live. I want to live in New York City because I want to be surrounded by people like that and feel like I can be who I want to be and be comfortable and be just in that environment. Like I want to live that and walk down those streets. And, and I remember after I saw that movie, I was like, I need to figure out a plan. And so at 19, my friends helped me to moved to New York City and then I, I was able to live there for almost 16 years. Oh, wow. And what do you miss the most about New York? Oh my God, the most about New York? Well, first I'm excited. I'm finally going back to New York in uh, the middle of June for two weeks because I've not been before the pandemic, but I loved it that you could have anything you want at any time you want. You could walk out your door and within like two blocks, you're gonna hit so many pizza shops, bodegas, you know, Starbucks, like everything, like everything's at your fingertips. It really is a city that never sleeps and it could be all there at the tip of your hands, your fingertips, like every opportunity you ever want. But at the same time, it could also be the devil and take you down the crazy path because there's just a lot of temptation in, in New York as well. 
absolutely. London is the same as well. London, it's kind of 24 hours no stop, but um, you need to have, you need to kind of have the balance and understand that things are a bit dangerous if you don't yeah, watch yourself. Totally. Right, so let's get another question for you. Right, Lucas, before the next question, did you always have the support of your family being, uh, being gay? Uh, support? No, 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 no. Uh, my family did not support me. Um, uh, I, I remember, I'm sure you know in Latin, Latino culture, it's just very machismo, very like, guys don't show emotions, they don't cry, they you know, go to the army, they do this, they shave their heads, you know. And so I always knew that I was different, but it wasn't until the internet started to come around when I was about 12 years old that I figured out, oh, this is what that means, I'm gay. Um, but it's the worst though, because I remember like I would be on the computer looking at like, you know, maybe like a, a shirtless guy and then my parents come and I'm trying to hit it and then, the, and then it slowly loads, it's like ch -ch 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 -ch. And I'm just like, oh, and I can't like shake it out. <laughs> but, but no, but my family, my, um, they, my father, he physically and emotionally abused me for a couple of years before he kicked me out of the house when I was 16. So I was living on the streets from 16 to 19 years old, I was homeless. So um, once that's why I wanted to go to New York City so I could be surrounded by more gay people and feel comfortable because I was in South Carolina at the time. And my friends, that's when they realized they needed to get me up there because I got very depressed. It was very, very dark in my head. I, I was doing a lot of things I shouldn't be doing. Um, I didn't take care of myself well. I didn't you know, treat myself good. Um, so, I didn't talk to my parents for a couple of years, and it was almost because my father died that I actually came back and finally we made amends. But the crazy part is, it wasn't until a couple months ago that my father finally told me that he was sorry. Like he literally said, I'm sorry for everything that I did to you. I just didn't know, I didn't understand. I was very ignorant to it all. Um, and it took 20 years, and, and I def that's something I definitely needed to hear. Amazing, amazing, and um, it's um, it's interesting you saying that, uh, Lucas, because I, I I believe as well, of course, it's not um, we look for comfort in our parents' figures, and when they are not there, when they they had the situation as you had it, I think I believe that some I mean, looking a positive side or the other side of the story um, is not their fault as well because they 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 didn't have the the knowledge. You know what I mean? They didn't have the knowledge at the time as well. And as you said before, it's a culture where macho men, you know, like men, it, we don't have this um, opening. And I believe that, um, but nowadays you're, um, you're, it's kind of clear nowadays, your relationship with them. Yes, yes, yeah. now, now it is. That's very good. Um, right, let's get another question for you. Yeah. Um, what makes you laugh out loud? What makes me laugh out loud? Um pretty much anything i'm very i can i can laugh very easily to most things especially when i'm watching a comedy show or a movie or a friend just makes a silly joke it just happens um i feel like because of like all the crazy things i try to stay in the light and in the positive and so uh, that's why i i'm always just i'm very goofing around i'm always making a joke i'm always just being silly with my friends um, and, and just just enjoying it because it's like I've been there on the other side where you know I don't even know if I'm gonna eat because I have two dollars and there's really I felt like no reason to laugh about so now I feel like I try not to take um, things for granted and, and just enjoy everything for, for what it is and, and sometimes it's just easier to make you know nice to just make a joke and make it make it light and whatnot. Very good, very good. Are you enjoying the show so far? Yeah, yeah, no, I am so I'm fine. Thank you. Great, another question. Right, next question for you is, what your parents did or do that comforts you the most? That comforts me? Um, I would say um, food. Like my mom and dad, they do show love by cooking food. And I, I feel like that's very big in, in our culture as well. So like every time I would come, my mom would always make me platano maduros with um, frijoles, 
um, queso fresco, tortillas, and, and huevos, eggs for breakfast because she knows that's just what I love. Like, and that's like, when she does that, it's just like, it makes me feel so good at, at, at here, my heart. And, and it's funny because my sister's like, mommy, she doesn't cook, with, she doesn't cook that when I'm coming over. She only does that when you come over. And I'm like, mm, that's because she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> are they back in South Carolina? Yeah, yes, they are. They are my sister and my parents are in South Carolina. And how far is South Carolina from Georgia? It's quite far or not? They're next door, well, where our states connect, but they live about two and a half hours away from me. Um, so it's not crazy far at all. Far. No, okay. Cool. Right there and right back. Another question. Lucas, before the next question, tell me a funny story that, um, that you can share during your business. Um, like an event that happened something crazy or unexpected um yes this, this is a, a this is more of a, just like a silly one and, and it was made something made me say bless his heart and, and i'll tell you what that means later on in this culture if you don't know already but there was an event where um it was a wedding and we were able to hire um more staff because i needed like 40 people to work this party so and i was like oh i'm thinking i'm gonna be there so i can hire like a few new people and just try them out because i'll be there and we have a lot of staff working so we can make sure we can all help them out in the kitchen and show them the ropes and this one guy was really sweet and and one of the jobs that you have to do is to pass hors d'oeuvres pass food around on a little tray and you go up to the people oh would you like to try da -da 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 -da. and he was in line in the back and the chef pointed at the table and said pass you know one of these trays of food and the guy looks at the tray at the food and he looks at something else and he picks up something else and he goes out onto the dance floor where the guests are like, you know, mingling, having cocktails and this and that. And I see him and I'm like, what is he doing? And he he, cared, he picked up a sheet pan, like a silver sheet pan with little plates on it. And the little plates had slices of butter because that butter was going to go on the dinner table. And you don't eat that, that's not hors d'oeuvres, you put that on your bread. But because this guy just for some reason, I don't know what crazy he was smoking, he decided to start passing around the butter. And so he would go up to guests and say, oh, would you like to try this and without even knowing? And then what's worse is that two of the guests were so drunk, they were like, yeah, sure, sure. Like, just like eating this butter. And I'm just like, no. So I'd have to get him and take him to the back. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, he told me to pass this. I'm like, no, he told you to pass that, the hors d'oeuvres, not the butter. No, bueno, <laughs> no, no, this is what you do. Bless me. <laughs> So that's what I mean when I'm saying babysitting sometimes and people do, just don't listen or pay attention. But I have a good way of um, making sure that whenever I have to reprimand somebody that I always do it in a positive way. And, and because I always feel like telling someone or showing them how to do something using honey versus a stick is so much more helpful because I feel like when people are just like nasty or they just like mean or start yelling at you, the other people are not going to listen. They just have a wall that goes up and they're just not going to talk and it's just going to be bumping heads versus if you talk to them from a, from a different place and a different point of view and not like you, 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 it helps people to understand more, like how to like, you know, be more receptive to information and, and adapt and, and this and that. And, and also be able to be honest to be, just tell you if I'm making a mistake or I'm screwing something up. Absolutely. Good one. Next question for you is, what do you like the most about yourself? Um, what do I like the most about myself? Uh, I do enjoy, I do, actually, I like that I'm very confident now. It took me a long time to build up my confidence and be able to just be comfortable in my own skin. Um, so, yeah, that, that was many, many years of therapy, figuring that out, but I would say definitely that. And why you say that? Does the fact because you are gay or because of physical? What? What? Why? Why do you say that? I think it's just. I think it was a lot more mentally because of what happened when I was younger with my family. That mm -hmm. I just felt like if my own parents didn't love me and wouldn't throw me out, why would anybody else in the world care about me? So maybe I am worthless and not, you know, of a greater value. So then, yet you start to believe those things. So I think that that's what took me a lot of a lot of years of uh, building up my confidence now. 
So now cool. it's like I'm very good about like, oh, shaking hands, making eye contact, making sure I'm actually listening to the other people and, and all that stuff because it just it makes a world of difference. But it also can be intimidating to somebody who isn't like that because they're like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, inter it's interesting saying that as well, Lucas, because as, a, as, start, as soon as I started to talk to you, I could see a very confident person. And now you're saying the story that you have behind, the, you know, building up this confidence. People that sometimes they don't know what we go through behind in our life, you know what I mean? Uh, behind, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, good point. Yeah. Other question? Right. Yeah. Let's do it. Right, next question for you is, what is something you wish you could do every single day? Something I wish I could do every single day? I wish I could walk outside of my house and see the beach. There is <laughs> be there. <laughs> wherever, wherever that beach may be. But I How wish far? I could walk out of a house and be right there because that is when I'm the happiest, is when I'm just by a big body of water. How far are you from the beach? The closest seaside? Yeah, pretty far. I would have to say like, I mean, not crazy far, but far enough. Um, maybe like five hours from the nearest beach. Maybe five and a half, but yeah. Ooh. Lucas, I have three questions left for you, okay? Let's oh, do okay. it. Let's do it. Right, next question for you is, where do you see yourself in five years' time? Um, in five years' time, I see myself married. Um, I see my business expanding. I see myself finally owning a house and definitely traveling a lot more. So how long do you uh, have been with your partner right now, your boyfriend? Uh, we're still in baby steps. It's 10 months. Uh, so 10 months in gay is like, what, two years in straight? Kind of like that. So, but but, it, but it's been amazing. And he, he is an amazing, amazing man. And I'm absolutely so thankful and happy that I met him. And I literally tell him I love him every day. Great. Two questions left. Bye. Okay. Next question for you. What do you miss the most of your childhood and why? Not having to be a grown up, like just being able to know that I get up and there's food on the table, I can watch my Saturday morning cartoons, I can go outside, play, make a mess, break a bone, be a silly kid, play hide and seek, come back and there's more food and the bills are paid. Oh my God, like being an adult. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, what I miss? I remember when I was a child, remember that uh, Christmas, your birthday took like so long to arrive. And oh. nowadays it's just like that. I know, I blink and I'm like, where did all this time go? How did I, like, where did 10 years go? But back then I remember just like, oh, just getting up at like, always on Christmas, I would for some reason get up at like six in the morning or five in the morning. But like, when it came to going to school, I'm like, <coughs> <I'm sick. laughs> Right, look, ready for the last one? Yep. Let's do it. Right, before the, the last question, as your parents, um, they, uh, their first language is uh, Spanish. Mm -hmm. At home, you always speak Spanish as a child? Yes, yeah, it was, it was always, like a group. It was Spanglish, so it was a little bit of both when I was little. And it was funny because when I would go to school, you should only be speaking English, but because I would just naturally think Spanish and English, I would look up to my teachers and talk to them. I'm like, yes, can I go to the bathroom? Book you don't get me out and you know, say, you know, what want that lucky, so can I go please? And they're like, what the, like, what, who, gay, okay, what? <laughs> so my parents had to tell me like, no, 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 no. Spanish only at the house, English at school, because <laughs> teachers won't understand. So I was like, okay. Oh, sweet. With little. Very sweet. Last question is, if you could have been in a moment, event in history, which one would be and why? Oh, I feel like this would completely change history. I don't know if that would be good or bad because they always say when you change things, who knows what the world would be like today. But if I could go back and be in the world where Adolf Hitler grew up, when before he turned into who he was, back when he was still a young guy and he was pursuing to even wanting to be an actor, and and that didn't work out, and and then you know he just got in with the group and eventually you know went in that direction. But you know if I could go back to that moment and kind of like see what 
what went in your head, what changed, what clicked that made you go in this direction and see if I could possibly like change it. Because wow, very, very interesting. Changed a lot of other things that happened that was just pretty bad. Wow, very good one. Okay, look, it's not the end yet. Okay, let's play now the quick thinking game. So I'm going to give away some words and just have one word that comes to your mind, okay? Okay. <laughs> let's start with money. Money, woo, vacations. Family? Love. How about life? Life, adventure. Sex? Sex, every day. <laughs> Love? Every day, every damn day. Good. Politics. Clowns. <laughs> Religion. Fools. Fear. Nah. Okay. Friendship. Precious. Regrets. No, never have. Okay. Desire. Ooh, desire, power. Success. Success, happiness. How about wish? Wish, mm, marriage. Happiness. Happiness, uh, family. Um, and uh, if I tell you South Carolina, one word. Get out. <laughs> and the last one, Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta, uh, love. Good, very good. Right, so let's pretend now I'm going to meet uh, your boyfriend and I'm going to ask him, tell me the most beautiful thing about Lucas and tell him something that he needs to improve on. Um, Lucas is very loyal and he listens to everything that you say. Um, for example, I we were at the Georgia Aquarium seeing um, the beluga whales last uh, October and I mentioned really thinking that they're the precious animals and they're so beautiful and we saw a little beluga whale in the gift shop and I pointed at it but we never did anything and then six months later Lucas showed up with the whale because he want, he remembered he wanted to go back and buy that little toy because I really loved it so he, he listens to everything that I say and, and he's very loyal um, Something that he could work on is I think he can be a little too lovey-dovey and he needs to like take a moment and breathe because he's very passionate, Hispanic man. So, you know, they're very fiery and very passionate and this and that. And it's like, ooh, breathe, just take a second, take it easy and stuff. So it doesn't have to always be a soap opera. It's because of, it's because of, I was about to say, it's because of the, the Latin blood, you know? Exactly, we're fiery. <laughs> the boys love us. The boys love us. <laughs> right, Lucas, let's play now. Lucas in the magic box. You can ask me a question, okay? Okay, Lucas, you can ask me a question now. How are you very close with your family? Um, not very... Well, I'm close. I talk to them, but not very close, very close, I would say. Okay. Do you have any siblings? I do. I do have a sister. She's three years younger than me. And uh, we are very different. Very, they are all back in Brazil. Okay. And um, I've got a niece as well. She's like 12 years old, my, no, 13 years old now, a niece. And uh, yeah, so I try to go to Brazil uh, once a year to visit my family. And um, I left Brazil when I was 19 years old, when I moved to Portugal on my own. And since then I've been living um, on my own. But I try to go, yes, I wouldn't say I'm very close to, to my my family. When I say very close, because I've got some friends, they are very close, like they talk every day or every weekend, you know, but I, I love them and I know they are there and I know they are there for me as well. But I just don't have this, um, let's say, very continual um, uh, mm -hmm. communication that some of the people, uh, friends I know that they do. But um, yeah, I would say I'm close to them, but not in a very like, everyday basis you know what i mean like talking every day or sharing everything but um yes that that's for sure good 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 great lucas you have a good time you too thank you so much will i appreciate having me did you enjoy yeah good yes, sir, I did. I very did. good just before you go if you don't mind to share a positive quote or a positive message something that inspires you um i would say if you can, to surround yourself with the people you want to become. Um, you know, 
like there's this thing that Oprah Winfrey says that if you want to get to know somebody, see who their 10 closest friends are, and that's going to tell you who that person is because you're only your product of your environment. So if you surround yourself with people who are very, you know, they're always working to like, you know, level up and, and going for success, it's very inspiring and, and it's very motivational and it kind of puts a fire in you to want to be able to do that and be on that same level with them. So for me is always surround yourself with the people that you look up to, possible mentors, if anything that you want to do in whatever, you know, in life, it's good to be around them because it is very inspiring. And it's nice to have people who understand what you want to do and can be there to support you. Very good. Totally agree with you. I sign underneath as well. <laughs> You're done. Right, it's also a pleasure. Thanks so much, Lucas. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you I appreciate it. All the best. Thank you very much. Ciao. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.